Does anyone understand the article Ms. Frizzle gave us? Something about importance of managing Canadian boreal forest. We have 10% of the world's total forest. They cover nearly half of 921 million hectares of Canadian land, 234 million of which is considered to be of commercial value. So it needs to be managed. It talks about using indicators measured through optical remote sensing like LiDAR. What does that mean? It means we have to measure forest characteristics, but measuring one tree is difficult enough. Apparently, there is forest resource inventory data that needs constant updating. To do this, we use indicators that was outlined by the Canadian Council of Forest Ministers. But there's 25 of them. It's going to take us forever. That's where LiDAR comes in and flying in airplanes, right? All I know about LiDAR is that it stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It emits pulses of laser light. That's right, the pulses are infrared wavelengths, and LiDAR records the elapsed time it takes to the laser to travel. Man, what does this have to do with the sustaining the forest? Wait, I got it! We use that to measure the forest, because the purpose of LiDAR is mapping the terrain in 3D. Good job, Carlos! LiDAR differs from other optical remote sensing because it samples and records X, Y, Z, and intensity measurements, producing a high-density 3D point cloud. So you're saying that we're going to be using laser pulses to create 3D images of the forest we're managing? That's exactly right, DA! We're going to the Northern Hardwood Forest in Turkey Lakes Watershed located 60 kilometers north of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario and 13 kilometers inland from Botswana Bay on Lake Superior. It contains tolerant hardwood maple forest composed mostly of rich sugar maple and yellow birch. Our objectives are to derive various laser height metrics from the small footprint LiDAR data and determine how well they can estimate various forest biophysical properties. So how do you propose we're going to do this, Frizzle? All this talk about estimating, I'm lost. Yo, come on guys, it can't be that hard. What we're doing is estimating forest parameters with LiDAR? Yes, but also to explore the intensity data of the LiDAR returns and how it can be used to derive other laser height metrics. So does this mean we're going to Sault Ste. Marie? You got it! Be prepared to fly! Mother! Alright class, let's take a look at the experiment! Yeah! <laughs> Hit it, Carlos! It looks like 36 of 49 plots have been used for previous research by the Canadian Forest Service. 11 plots located in the clear-cut blocks, 5 plots in the selection blocks, 9 plots in the shelterwood blocks, and 11 in the control blocks. Additionally, 13 new samples were created. 5 were established on the vertical gradient along the steepest slope in Botswana Mountain, referred to as the Botswana plots, used to capture stands with more variation in tree height. The remaining 8 are going to be referred to as Control 2 plots. The Control and the Botswana plots have no silvicultural treatments applied to them, whereas the others do. In order to understand how well LiDAR can estimate the biophysical forest parameters, we must first collect ground-based measurements. GPS will be used to determine the location of the center of each plot. Data is going to be collected for 15 to 30 minute durations with a 2 second logging rate for each plot with an accuracy of plus or minus 1 to 5 meters. Height measurements will be obtained using a vertex hypsometer. Crown diameters will be obtained with a tape measure. Sugar maple tree crowns will be represented by an ellipsoidal geometric shape. Hemispherical photos will be taken using an 8mm fisheye lens positioned 1 meter above the ground near the center of the plot. The species, diameter breast height, tree height, and crown diameters along major and minor axes will be recorded for trees that have a diameter breast height greater than 9 centimeters. With the data we collect, we should be able to drive 10 of the following biophysical forest metrics for each plot. They include maximum tree height, Lori's mean tree height, mean diameter breast height, Total base area, percent canopy openness, leaf area index, ellipsoidal crown closure, total above ground biomass, total wood volume, and stem density. What are we waiting for? We're taking ground based measurements and comparing it to LiDAR metrics, and we're going to see if the regression shows a correlation between the two data sets. Yeah, sounds good. According to my research, the LiDAR sensor will be attached to the airplane, which will be flown over the study site at an altitude of 750 meters in overlapping flight lines. In this way, a point density of 3 to 5 points per meter squared can be achieved with a forward point spacing of 2 meters and a lateral point spacing of 0.6 meters. The laser returns can be separated into four layers. 
The laser pulse that reflects off the top of the vegetation is termed as vegetation first, while the second pulse is vegetation last. Similarly, there are ground first and ground last layers. LiDAR tree height measurements were extracted by taking the difference between the ground last and vegetation first layers. Three LiDAR height measurements were extracted by doing the fly-through, maximum, mean, and intensity return. But who's going to do the field analysis? What a good idea, DA! Whoa, 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 hey! Hey, Neat, it's a tree identification field guide. We can use this while we take our measurements. Excellent observation, DA! Whoa! Tim, you can go along and use the GPS to find the study sites. It's time to take chances, make mistakes, and get messy! Whoa! <laughs> So okay, let's get started. Where are those shelterwood plots? According to my GPS, they're this way. Come on. Yes, you found it. You get it now. By using the two data sets, we can see which of the three laser height metrics, which are max, mean, and intensity return laser heights, will best estimate the parameters we're me measuring. Hear what Frizz and the class are doing. Bus, do your thing. Activate LiDAR, Ralphie! Your thing, Frizzle! analysis. To use the multiplicative model, the natural logarithm transformation of ground-based and laser height metrics were made. Simple linear regressions were done between ground-based and laser height metrics. The Shapiro-Wolf test was used to test for the normality of error terms, but the Levine's test was used to test for the constancy of variance between samples. Previous studies showed that vertical foliage were related to laser returns intercepted by the canopy, so the amount of backscatter was clearly dependent on canopy structure and crown shape. Using this, we can see which height metrics were successful in estimating biophysical properties while others were. These are the laser height matrix that can predict the forest characteristics. The maximum laser height metric best estimates the ground-based maximum tree height and the noise mean tree height. The mean laser height is the best estimator of the diameter at breast height, percent canopy openness, leaf area index, ellipsoidal crown closure, and stem density. The intensity return laser height, which is the mean derived from laser height measurements within an intensity above 200, is the best estimator of total basal area, total above ground biomass, and total wood vo volume. Conifers are typically underestimated because of their conical nature of the tree crown. There is a low probability that the laser pulse will intercept it. However, in our study, the deciduous trees were also being underestimated. This is because the field measurements using the hypsometer were inaccurate because Tim found it hard to distinguish between the treetops. Therefore, LiDAR measurements are more precise and the overall implication is that regardless of the forest type, tree heights will always be underestimated. The Botswana plots follow different linear relations due to differences in canopy structure and foliage distribution. The structures differed because their growth was affected by high elevation stress. This is true because they have smaller diameter breast height and shorter tree heights but higher stem densities compared to other undisturbed sample plot types. Therefore, one laser height metric can represent different values for a given biophysical property. The drawbacks when using the laser height matrix. As an example, when using the mean laser height, it will underestimate the height of a single tall tree in an otherwise low-lying vegetation area. The solution is to set heart threshold to identify the minimum tree height. That way we can differentiate trees from other vegetation. Intensity return laser height metrics was the best estimator of basal area, total above ground biomass, and total wood volume because it was able to account for the most variability of the deviation between predicted and observed values without the need of distinguishing plot types. Fully understand this, more research needs to be done on what affects the reflectivity of objects such as the orientation of leaves, branches, scan angle, and other components. In conclusion, we found that small footprint LiDAR height matrix can be used to estimate biophysical properties for deciduous forests that have smaller stand and canopy, and that there is a value in the intensity return data, but further research needs to be done. Yeah, boy! Tarbo should give you all A's! Yeah! yeah!